Hey there, Sports History fans. Arnie Chapman here from the Sports History Network to share with you an awesome announcement. Now dig on this. Four of our amazing podcasts have clinched spots in the final round of the Sports Podcast Awards, and we need your support to take home the trophy. First up, we've got Basketball History 101, Driving the Lane in the Best Basketball Category. Then on deck, we've got Orville Mulligan Sports Writer. He's cracking up the competition in the Best Sports Comedy Category. Marty's Illegal Stick is dominating the ice next in the Best Hockey Category. And last but not least, we have Wrestling with Heels on Power bombing its way to victory in the best wrestling category. Now, again, we're counting on you to cast your vote and help out these incredible podcasters secure their well-deserved recognition. It's super easy. All you got to do is head over to the dedicated landing page. That's at sportshistorynetwork.com forward slash vote. Again, that's sportshistorynetwork.com forward slash vote. Now, let's take another look at sports yesteryear with this episode Brought to you by, of course, the Sports History Network. Welcome, everybody, to the January 8th broadcast of One Guy with a Mic, Dingers and Dunks. A lot less dingers, a lot less dunks currently, as it's football season. And we just got done wrapping up week 18 with the Buffalo Bills coming back to beat the Miami Dolphins in Miami to make the second seed a dream come true and they will go play have the sealers come to orchard park new york next week on sunday in a afc wild card matchup so that's how we're beginning the show we're going to talk about the nfl playoffs that's coming up and what a wild week 18 it was so i am hope hopefully you're strapped in and ready to rock and roll all right Let's start with the Saturday game, shall we? Saturday games involved Pittsburgh and Baltimore. Baltimore sat their sat their uh, starters, and Pittsburgh had to win, and then a little help get in the playoffs. Pittsburgh would win in a muddy mess, 17-10 behind Najee Harris. Then in the nightcap was Houston and Indianapolis. What a and this game down came down to C.J. Stroud just dropping dimes. All right. Is what it came down to. I'm not going to count that Gardner Minshew to Tyler Goodson incomplete pass because, A, that was a bad pass, but that was only a bad pass because if you watch the replay, the end was coming in. So you had to try to throw it around the end and also try to get it in front of the linebacker and cornerback and the DB that had actually already gone out to double Pittman, right? So he was trying to squeeze it through a hole, came a little short. Goodson got his hands on it, just didn't – just couldn't corral it in. All right. It is what it is. Uh, Indianapolis wasn't supposed to be in this position either. But then again, Houston wasn't supposed to be in this position either. Behind a rookie head coach and a rookie quarterback. Then you come to today's game. So what what had to happen for Houston to win the, AF, the uh, AFC South? Well, they needed a little help from Tennessee. And what did Tennessee do? Oh, they beat Jacksonville 28-20. All right. So that gave Houston the AFC South Championship. Not the Jacksonville Jaguars out of the playoffs thanks because Pittsburgh had won the night before. So, Pittsburgh was in. Then, you had a, so then you had Cincinnati Cleveland, since he just running up the store on the Cleveland JV squad. 31-14. Joe Mixon had 111 yards. He had a pretty good day. A couple touchdowns. You had New England and New York New York beating New England 17-3 to in what could be Bill Belichick's last game as a head coach, which is kind of ironic that the team that he quit from before he was even hired, or at his, I should say, at his press conference to get hired, uh, loses to maybe in his last game as a New England head coach. Then you got Atlanta and New Orleans. All right. New Orleans needed a, one of these two teams needed a win, and then they needed Carolina to beat Tampa Bay. All right. Well, New Orleans came out and whooped Atlanta's butt, forty-eight to seventeen. Uh, little controversy in this game. Uh, Jamal Williams led the led the team in t- rushing touchdowns last year, and hadn't scored a touchdown all all year. So instead of taking a knee at the one yard line, Jameis Winston and the offense caught an audible and gave Jamal Williams his one yard touchdown for his t- only touchdown of the year. 
Then you had Tampa Bay, Carolina. This is a real barn burner, folks. A real barn burner. Baker Mayfield with 137 yards passing. Uh, Chris Godwin had uh, 51 yards receiving. Carolina losing to Tampa Bay 9-0. to zero. That was bad, about as bad as the 3-0 Raiders-Vikings game earlier this year. Next up, you had Detroit and Minnesota. Minnesota needed a win and to get in and a lot of help. They needed Green Bay to lose, Send Seattle to lose, New Orleans to lose. Well, New Orleans won, so Vikings were out no matter what. They would go on to lose 30-20. to Nick Mullins threw for 396. Justin Jefferson had 192. Ty Chandler had 69 yards rushing. Um, probably shouldn't have made Ty Chandler your running back four weeks in, boys and girls. Now wait until the last, the last dance. Last uh, non, last five, six weeks. So that brings us to the afternoon game. It's, all right, so you had Green Bay needed a win to get in. Seattle needed a win to get in and a Green Bay loss. And Green Bay would beat Chicago 17-9 to up in uh, Lambeau Field. Jordan Love threw, would throw for 316. Aaron Jones rushed for 111. And Jaden Reed had 112 receiving yards. But the... Uh, and so, and then Seattle, uh, finding out that the game was over, would just go on ahead and go and beat the Arizona Cardinals 21-20 uh, for a win there. Then you had Kansas City and Los Angeles, and it was a battle of backups uh, in both these with both these teams. KC won 13-12. And then you also had L.A. beating San Francisco in a game of backups as well, 21-20. The leading rusher of the game was Carson Wentz with 56 yards. Am I reading that correct? Yes, I am. The Carson Wentz had 56 yards rushing to lead, to lead, to lead the game. And then guess what? Dallas didn't do Dallas things. They went out to Washington and won 38-10. Dak Prescott threw for, for 279 and four TDs. C.D. Lamb had 98 yards and two touchdowns, I do believe. So then that brings us to, oh, one more game. The game of the day, as always. The Las Vegas Raiders beat the Denver Broncos 27-14. to uh, The Las Vegas Raiders have now beat the Broncos eight straight times. Eight straight times. Okay? Just saying. Let me repeat that one for you. For, for all you Broncos fans in the back, uh, eight straight times, okay? Uh, and then you had the, of course, you just had the Buffalo-Miami game, uh, which was, Miami was winning 14-7, to and then uh, Buffalo had a 96-yard punt return for a TD, and then Josh Allen would leave the, leave the drive down for a for game-winning game, game winning touchdown for a 21-14 victory. So that wraps up week 18. Um, your uh, draft picks are with the, uh, you got the Chicago Bears with the number one pick. Um, and then you have, uh, after that, you, hold on one second, give me a second here. A little dead air, that's okay. Um so, Commanders got the number two pick as well. All right. New England got three, Arizona four, Chargers five, Giants six, Titans seven, Falcons eight, Bears ten, nine, Jets ten is how that pans out. Um, Eleven is the Vikings. And twelve is the Raiders. Thirteen is the Saints. Oh, that should take care of all the draft picks for this year. Oh, wait, hold on. I take that back. So, this is the actual draft order. Chicago, 1. Washington, 2. New England, 3. Arizona, 4. Chargers, 5. Giants, 6. Titans, 7. Falcons, 8. Bears, 9. Jets, 10. Minnesota, 11. Denver, 12. Raiders are 13. New Orleans are coming in at 14. Indy comes in at 15. Seattle is 16. Jacksonville's got the 17th pick. 18th pick is Cincinnati. And there you have it for now. Um, the rest are still to be determined on what comes out of the, how they finish in the playoffs. So, that brings us to 
wild card weekend. All right, Saturday's games. You got Cleveland versus Houston. Give me the Cleveland Browns all day. Uh, number one ranked defense. Uh, don't don't really care about the rest. Um, Joe Flacco is on a mission, man. He's gonna get that. He's on a mission to get a second Super Bowl. That's what he's on a mission for. Next up, you got Miami KC. By the way, this is streaming on Peacock, so you have to have Peacock in order to watch a football game. So you should probably buy a Peacock so you can watch this game, or not. It's Miami KC. It's a uh, Tyreek versus Patrick Mahomes. Tua. I don't know how Tua is gonna. The Dolphins are on a slide. So anything going this way. Kansas City's not playing the best. Um, to me, this is a really garbage game. And not not a game I really want to see, but we'll take uh, we'll take KC to win it. Fine with me. Uh, next up, uh, you got Pittsburgh Buffalo next Sunday at the noon game on CBS. Uh, we're going Buffalo, hottest team right now in the NFL. Then you got Green Bay Dallas, probably Dallas second hottest team in the NFL right now. Uh, Dallas is going to beat Green Bay because Jordan Love. That's all I'm saying. Then you got the Rams versus the Lions. We're going Rams, upsetting the Lions at home. Matthew Stafford, Jared Goff, you know, the two quarterbacks guys got traded for each other. So, we're going Rams. And then we got Philly and Tampa Bay. And the way Philly's playing right now, I'm, the chances are Tampa Bay might just win. So, that would leave the matchups of Cleveland versus... It would be Cleveland versus... Um, shoot, Baltimore. Uh, we're going Cleveland. Then we got Buffalo, Kansas City, Buffalo. And then on the NFC side, it would be the Rams, Niners, and the uh, Buccaneers, Cowboys. We're going Rams, Cowboys in the NFC Championship game. And Bills, Browns in the AFC Championship game. And then why not have a rematch of a 90 Super Bowl? And go Buffalo, Dallas, and the Super Bowl, boys and girls. And I'm taking Josh Allen to win it all. Sorry, Dak Prescott, but Josh Allen's winning it all. That's what I'm going with. Uh, so, there's a little bit of a breakdown. We'll get more in depth later on it as, the, as it goes on, obviously. Because we're concentrating on, on uh, football lately, which is a lot of fun for me. So, now... Before we get into that, before we get into the college football championship game between the University of Michigan and the University of Washington, I've got a little trivia question for y'all. What does the J in basketball player, Doctor J, stand for? We'll let you a little dwell on that. We'll give you we'll give you the answer before we end. Uh, but as always, podcast is sponsored by. Or I should say not sponsored by, should say it's partnered with Shanket Golf as an ambassador. So go to shankitgolf.com. Golf season's right around the corner. Uh, go ahead and enter promo code one guy, O N E G U Y, into the coupon code as you check out and save ten or fifteen percent on your next purchase. That's one guy as you check out for shankitgolf.com. They also have putters available now and just not golf bags or apparel. So make sure you do that. Also, if you're new to the podcast and you're hanging out, listening to the basketball, baseball guy talk about football, then you've come to the right spot. And why don't you go ahead and drop that follow button, ring the little bell next to it. And so that way you're always ready for me to give out new episodes. Also, go ahead and hit that automatic download button so we get downloads for the month. Ayo. So. We are doing fantastic in that business. We almost had $500, 500 downloads for the last uh, last three months. So that was a good way to end the fourth quarter, baby. We come, Fourth quarter of 2023 was great. Now, I also said we're going to have uh, more interviews, or not interviews, but guests on this podcast. I'm working on that. I'm still trying to find a guinea pig to help me out with trying to figure out how to record on here uh, with a remote guest. So... As soon as that happens, hopefully by the start of February, Super Bowl season, Super Bowl time, that's when we're going to have it done. So, because I really want to just bring a uh, different sports fan on here every week, so that way they can talk about their sports team and have a little fun chat along with it. So, that's where we're at. Now, let's go to the 
Washington Michigan championship game. All right. This is where all the, this is for all the marbles. Okay. This is the big one. All right. Michigan's favored by four and a half. Uh, total the over under is 56 and a half. All right. So, uh, and the two teams are, as I've said before, are matching, uh, are matching up for the first time since, uh, 2021 is what it is. Uh, also both teams are undefeated, right? And Michigan's coming off the overtime win against Alabama and Washington's coming off, holding off the win against the, um, Texas Longhorns, okay? When does this game take place? Oh, yeah, it takes place Monday, January 8th at 7, 6.30 p.m. Eastern Time. You can watch on an ESPN or the ESPN app, and it takes place in Houston. So we got Jim Harbaugh, who's underneath the investigation. Probably not a good deal. Uh, so he is in the second year of a five-year contract with Michigan, and he's probably going to get suspended for a while. So, well, that's enough. Let's talk about the other coach, right? Let's talk about Kalen DeBoer, all right? He's only in his second season as the Huskies head coach. DeBoer has led the program to 21 straight victories, the longest active win streak in the FBS currently. And he's also got the school's first appearance at a national championship game. Uh, he started off at the University of Sioux Falls in South Dakota as a head coach, where he went to also where he graduated from. Yeah, he won three NAIA national titles there, and he also had three undefeated seasons. He, he had as many undefeated seasons, loss, undefeated seasons as he had losses, which was three. Uh, he would leave Sioux Falls at 67-3 and three and a 17-2 record in the playoffs. Uh, he would go from NAIA to FCS to the group of five, and ultimately the sport's biggest stage has spanned over two decades. He has coached at seven schools, and he has had three head coaching jobs, including Washington. Um, Offense Ryan Grubb and the staff um, has developed with the staff, including offensive coordinator Ryan Grubb and the staff continuity have a direct correlation to the Huskies' success. Um, so it's basically not having a carousel, and he brought most of the guys with him from uh, from Sioux Falls as well. So. Last time Michigan had a national title was in 1997 when they shared it with Nebraska. That was also by chance the last time Nebraska had a national t- title as well. The last national title that the Huskies had was in 1991, and they shared that with the University of Miami, the U. Right. So at running back, you got Blake Cor- uh, Corum, and for Michigan, and you have the key players are pretty much uh, Blake Corum and at running back, and then Rome Odunzi at wide receiver for Washington. Uh, He uh, has a 1,000-yard receiving. Him and Jalen Polk represent one of 4,000-yard receiving tandems in the FBS. Um, And he has entered the semifinal against Texas with 82% of his receptions receptions having gone for first downs or touchdowns. Uh, it's going to be a battle up front between Michigan's defensive line and Washington's O-line, which I think uh, the Washington O-line is a little bit better than what the O-line for Alabama was. So I really think that uh, Washington hold their own. Plus they got Michael Penix Jr., uh, who's a little bit more mobile than Milroy. Okay. Um, and Penix uh, only completes 41% of his passes outside the pocket. So, but Washington's only given up 11 sacks all season as well. And Texas did not get a sack on him at all. Like I said, the last meeting was in 2021. Uh, Michigan won 31 to 10 and Corum ran for a 67 yard, 67 yard TD that game. It also was the, uh, la- the Washington also went four and eight that year against Jimmy Lake and Harbaugh would, would go 12 and two that year with a loss to Georgia in the semifinals. X, factor, X factors are going to be the special teams for the Wolverines. And whether or not they can not botch a snap, miss a field goal, or muff a punt. That would be probably a good thing for them. Uh, defensive end, Braylon Trice is going to be the guy on Washington's side that's going to be defensive end. Trice was named the team's MVP. He sacked Quinn Ewers twice on Monday night. 
and was equally disruptive against Oregon this season as well, posting four tackles and a pass breakup in the Pac-12 title game. So, there's a little bit of a breakdown of them. Michigan comes in with the number one defense uh, ranking is what it has, right? So, um, Blake Corm's a thousand yard rusher, uh, all that fun stuff. But I, I'm just liking the hot hand right now, and I understand. I get it. Michigan's 14 and 0. Oh my God, they're 14 and 0 too. Don't disrespect the Wolverines and Jim Harbaugh. He's gonna win a national title this year for the first time ever, and I don't care. I really think Michigan. I really think Washington's going to. Um, get her done I think Washington is definitely going to take take care of it I mean he had Michael Penny's Jr. Throw, he threw for almost 4,700 yards this year okay it's, I mean really that's, that's all I'm saying he threw for 4,700 yards okay um, so and then on offense wise you had you had uh he had Washington on the Washington side. Uh, they averaged 473 yards per game. Uh, as a team, they threw for 4,900 yards. They had 1,730 rushing yards, and they averaged 37.6 points per game, right? Uh, they did give up 23 points per game as well. Meanwhile, you had uh, Michigan, their offense – was really not I mean they had 5,298 total yards uh they averaged 36 points a game that's what they averaged they they kind of they were pretty equal they had 3,000 passing yards and they had 2,200 rushing yards so I mean they were equal Big Ten football at its best uh on the defensive side they only gave up nine points a game which you know the that is also thrown into a mix of uh, you had Eastern East Carolina, they gave up three points. UNLV, they only gave up seven. Bowling Green, seven. Rutgers, seven. Nebraska, seven. Minnesota, ten. Indiana, seven. Shut up, Michigan State. Um, but uh, Penn State put up 15 on them. Maryland put up 24. Ohio State put 24. Obviously, uh, Alabama put up 20 on them. And they shut out Iowa. So, I mean, a little bit. I, w I wouldn't say any of those teams that scored the, the single digits was is comparable to Washington, right? Meanwhile, Washington's over here uh, playing teams, getting scored on. They got gave up 31 to – or they gave up 19 to Boise State in a win. Uh, they gave up 10 to Tulsa, 7. California scored 32, but they scored 59. I mean, and their lowest score game was against Arizona when they won 15 to 7. Okay, uh, their highest scoring game was USC when it was fifty, well, fifty two forty two. But I mean that wasn't really their. Yeah, that'd be their highest scoring game of the year. Uh, was that game right there fifty two forty two when they beat USC who was twentieth at the rank at the time? Uh, they did beat Oregon thirty four thirty one, Washington State twenty four twenty one. I mean they've had some closer games down the stretch, and I think they're just a little bit more built for the close game. Uh, I mean. Alabama shot themselves in the foot uh, when they were playing Michigan. And, I mean, it is what it is. Football bounced Michigan's way. So which, that's what happens sometimes. So, uh, we're going to Huskies on Monday night. And we're going to have a little fun with that. And uh, so, there you have it. <clears throat> this week's quick program. Also, by the way, the Dodgers just uh, also got Teoscar, Te Teoscar Hernandez. For a one-year deal at twenty-three and a half million dollars a year, apparently they're just going to become the, as one of the guys in Discord said, they're becoming the New York Mets, which that sounds like fun to me. Let them just be the New York Mets, or better yet, the I don't know, spend a lot of money and then get bounced in the second round sounds sounds like a fun time to me. I really hate the Dodgers, and not just this year, but all years. So anyway, back to the uh, question of the day. What does the J in basketball player Dr. J's name stand for? Well, if you said Julius, you are correct. Julius Dr. Dre Irving. What a career that guy had. One, uh, 
I think he had an ABA championship and also an NBA championship. He did have an NBA championship in 83 with the Philadelphia 76ers. So, uh, thanks for, uh, thanks for stopping by. Thanks for tuning in next week. Um, we're actually going to get this thing out on a Friday, you know, for the first time in, I don't know how long. So that's going to happen next week, by the way. Uh, we're going to give a breakdown of the divisional round. Uh, well, I guess we won't really have a divisional round next week. <laughs> uh, so I guess we won't be putting it out on a, uh, on a Friday, we'll be putting it out on a Sunday, uh, cause then we'll give a breakdown of the divisional round games for the following week. Uh, and again, we're probably going to, we're going to find, figure that out to get some people on here. Uh, go to the YouTube page, uh, go ahead and subscribe to that. So that way you can listen to the podcast on YouTube. If you want to, uh, you can go to twitch.com or twitch.tv. Follow me on Twitch TV, uh, in case you ever want to watch me play video games or, and basically do what I do here with video games playing at the same time. Um, which is just talk about sports, baby. And then, uh, so, um, follow me on Twitter. One guy with a mic, uh, follow me on TikTok. One guy with a mic. We're still need to do some TikToks right now as well. And we got to do a live as well. So we got some things coming up, coming out later this month. We're only seven days into the new year and I'm feeling fresh and ready to go. So y'all have a great week. Have a great night. Have a wonderful day. And you know what? Take care of yourself and others. Hey there, Sports History fan. This is Arnie Chapman, a.k.a. the Football History Dude, and I wanted to thank you for stopping by to listen to another episode here on the Sports History Network. Our podcasters are passionate about uncovering and sharing sports stories from yesteryear. And if you didn't know it already, we have over 30 shows across the network covering all sorts of sports history topics. In fact, Here's a glimpse into one of our awesome podcasts here on the network. The Pigskin Tales podcast is all about the lesser known pro football players. Yes, there are stories about the ones we know, like Brad Tarkenton and Harold Red Grange. But have you ever heard of Ernie Nevers? How about Dave Osborne or even Grady Alderman? These men created their own path to the NFL. How did they do it? Listen to the Pigskin Tales podcast. Now streaming on your favorite music platform. Go to pigskintales.com. How about that? I bet you're super hyped to go listen to that new podcast, right? Well, to learn about this show and all the other podcasts on the network, head over to sportshistorynetwork.com forward slash podcast. Again, that's sportshistorynetwork.com forward slash podcast. Head over there today to find your next favorite sports history podcast.